found our colors. We've made a decision. Great. We need brushes. You should check out our workshop. Push your color boundaries while staying well within your budget walls. I want to paint something else. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. I'm Tom Rinaldi in Cleveland, Ohio, to tell you a story that started nearly four years ago. It's a story I thought was over after we initially broadcast it back in the summer of 2009. I was partially right. For me, it was over. But for the woman who produced it, Lisa Fenn, and the two young men we profiled, Leroy Sutton and D'Artagnan Crockett, the story was just beginning of three people who entered each other's lives and never left. In our job, we're always on the lookout for stories that are inspiring in nature. For people who have overcome something. Just looking at the two of them, you knew they overcame something. It was a startling image. One of those things that you want to to look at, to absorb, yet you feel like you probably shouldn't be staring. Notice your mask, right? Follow me. Follow me. They were inseparable. You could tell there was a brotherhood there. Everything in life, he takes it all in stride. When we first met, we instantly like had this like bond. I just know I can count on him. It's like. For anything. He has his struggles. I have mine. We had our struggles. We're still going through them. Eight years before we met Leroy Sutton, his future was shaped on a set of train tracks while walking to school in Akron, Ohio. There was rocks and gravel, and I kind of just slipped and kind of just went under. His backpack caught by one of the passing cars, Leroy was pulled beneath a slow-moving freight train. Both his legs were crushed. That's ask why. That's all I did. The whole time I was in the hospital, just ask why. Why? When I tried to go to sleep, I'd end up hearing the sound of a train and it just walked me back up. By the time we met Leroy in Cleveland, he'd already been living as a double amputee for eight years. The day we went to film at Leroy's house and watched how he gets up the stairs to his grandmother's house and how he lifts that wheelchair over his head. took my breath away. Leroy agreed to spend some time with Lisa and our film crew, reluctantly. I found Leroy in his room in the basement and he was playing video games. I sat down and made a few attempts at conversation that went absolutely nowhere. I have a real big issue with trust. So when she first showed up, I, I didn't want anything to do with her at all. Lyra has been hurt a lot by people closest to him. It's just harder for him to actually build up that trust, to actually open up and trust someone. Coming from a broken home, one of the only people Leroy did trust was D'Artagnan Crockett, the only teammate strong enough to practice with Leroy on their high school wrestling team. Get up, get on my back, step on. In fact, D'Artagnan carried Leroy that entire season long, into and out of every match. He was able to come to school every day with a smile on his face. You would never think that anything was wrong with him. Leroy was only half the story and half the reason we came to Cleveland. 
D'Artagnan had a challenge of his own, as I learned when I first interviewed him. How would you describe your ability to see? From where I'm sitting, I can just barely make out your facial features. How far away am I from you? Four or five feet, something like that. D'Artagnan is legally blind. Born with Leber's disease, a condition that causes acute visual loss, D'Artagnan's been severely nearsighted his entire life. I planned to meet D'Artagnan outside of the school office, and as he was about 15 feet away from me, he said, hey, Lisa, how are you? And I said, how did you see me? And he said, I just remember that's the way your shadow stands. So back then we thought we had our story, it was clear. The wrestler who couldn't walk, carried by the one who couldn't see. But there was much more that we, especially Lisa, were beginning to glimpse. For D'Artagnan, we found out his mother, Juanita, died when he was just eight years old. His father, Arthur, battled drug and alcohol addiction. And for much of D'Artagnan's youth, we learned he had no permanent place to call home. There have been times that I'd have to, like, just scavenge out for food because we have so little. I've moved about five or six times within the past three years, in some cases because, like, we didn't have the money. D'Artagnan found his stability and his strength on the wrestling mat. When I started, it gave me structure, it gave me responsibility. It gave me a family, gave me brothers that I didn't get a chance to grow up with because we were separated when my mother had passed. After I win a match, and I look to the ceiling and the point, all that is dedicated to my mother. Despite their disability, D'Artagnan finished the 2009 wrestling season 26 and 3 and was a league champion. Leroy won nine matches, a majority of those by pin. But as much as the two were bound by their sport, they were drawn closer by their friendship. Almost everywhere we found one, we found the other. Brothers more than wrestlers. I really admired how, how they stayed on the straight path. They didn't make destructive choices. They weren't bitter. They had just been dealt a really lousy hand. I present to you Lincoln West High School class of 2009 graduates. As that school year closed, both had earned his diploma from a high school with a graduation rate under 50%. Both of them just seemed like they had come the farthest of anyone standing on that stage to get that diploma. Job, man. What did I think that the future would be? I honestly had no idea. I had no idea where I would end up. thought my future would just be like, you know, get a job at either GameStop, Walmart. Coming from where I come from, there's not really too much of a future in that neighborhood. After they crossed this stage, D'Artagnan and Leroy essentially walked away from structure and into uncertainty. Wrestling was over, school was done, our cameras were gone. One thing they did know was their story would be broadcast across the country that summer, and it was in August 2009. For Outside the Line, Tom Rinaldi reports on one such friendship. The story ended with a simple fact, that while both wanted to attend college, neither could afford it. That fact struck a chord with our viewers and sparked an incredible response. For the next five or six hours, I averaged an email about every two minutes. Most of the emails were from people who wanted to know how they could give money. I didn't really know <laughs> what they could do. Um, but I have a family friend who's an attorney and in warp speed helped to set up a trust fund. In all, Lisa received over 700 emails from viewers offering to help. And in less than a month, 
nearly $50,000 was contributed to the Carry On Trust. And a small number of donors did even more, stepping forward to pay the balance of college tuition and living expenses for both Leroy and D'Artagnan. What a great feeling to be able to deliver news like that to people that there's, there's hope. The possibility of college was closer, but still far from reach. Simply put, D'Artagnan and Leroy had no idea or help how to move beyond the only world they'd ever known, inner city Cleveland. That's when Lisa stepped in and became the living difference. In short, she did everything from collecting their transcripts, to helping them apply to college, to managing their finances. The TV story was over. In the next year, Lisa would leave her producing job altogether. But in D'Artagnan and Leroy's life, she was just beginning. She had a tremendous amount of responsibility that she put on herself as she took on this role and the incredible needs that they had countless hours spent and very taxing because if she wasn't able to do this, these two young men would not have the means to continue on. You can't go into environments like this and earn the trust of two boys like this who have needs like this and then just walk away. I mean, I don't think anyone would do that, really. I'm not going to be next on that list of people to break their trust. She cared enough to stay and help us out through something that was as critical as this. We just formed a bond, and she just really wanted to help, really wanted to see us succeed. She thought that we struggled enough. With Lisa's help, another opportunity emerged. Leroy and D'Artagnan were invited to visit the United States Olympic Training Center in Colorado. The trip changed D'Artagnan's life. In February 2010, he moved to Colorado full-time in the hopes of becoming a U.S. Paralympian in a new sport, judo. When I first got out here, pretty much just had just the basic room, the bed, desk, you know, pretty much just the bare essentials. But for me, it was the best thing I've ever had. Leroy's focus shifted to becoming a full-time college student, far from the Ohio winter. I ended up going to Collins College in Phoenix, Arizona to study video game design. Thank you. Leroy is on track to earn his bachelor's degree this August, but it hasn't been easy. Right around the time that Leroy was going off to college, he told us that um, his girlfriend was pregnant and he was going to be a father. And I thought it's over. On December 20th, 2010, Alani Sutton was born. He was determined to be the father that he didn't have. <laughs> That's my goal, like, not to be one of those dads to just, like, get up and disappear. <laughs> that she would never have to live through anything that I lived through. This is the story of how Wayne Pooh and his friends... What I've learned from Leroy is you can never, ever count him out. He was hit by a train. He was hit by a train. <laughs> And he got up. What more do you need to know? While Leroy faced the challenges of new fatherhood head on, D'Artagnan tackled his new path with determination. After just two years practicing to master his new sport, judo, he was trying to earn a spot in the 2012 Paralympic Games in London. To get there, he'd have to win his weight division at the national trials. I get into a swing contest, you know what you want to do. Stay back, drag. You're letting him do that to you. Yes, come on, keep going. Yeah! You're not careful, he'll hurt you. I work on with him. 
Yeah, keep moving. Don't stop moving. Yes, sir. Let's just keep doing it like that. Okay. Okay. Turn it, turn it. Yeah. One more. Okay. Stick to the plan. Give me some. Let's go. After five wins in one day, D'Artagnan stood at the edge of his goal. One more win, and he'd be going to London for the Paralympic Games. Go! Yep, 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 yep! Go! Hey, I got somebody I need you to talk to. Lisa. <laughs> hey, Lisa. I'm going to London. <laughs> I'm going to London. It was important to me that the first person I spoke to was Lisa because she, she got me there. I love you too. <laughs> Once again, they always teach me you can never, ever count them out. Ever. All throughout high school, I supported him. I stay by the mat. And it's like, now he's going to the Paralympics. And it's like, I want to be there for that. I want to be there to support them, like old times. It just wouldn't make sense without Leroy. How could he not be there for the biggest competition of his life? You did it! Yes, I didn't miss my flight. <laughs> All right, go get him. Oh, I'm excited. He has no idea I'm coming. I was trying so hard not to laugh. I'm just like sneaking up behind him. We take a whole goal? <laughs> <laughs> we take a whole goal or something? <laughs> D'Artagnan was the only judo athlete there without a parent. <laughs> you could tell he was tense. But then when Leroy arrived, Everything changed. You know, we have that bond, and that bond is damn near unbreakable. <laughs> Reaching London was great, but D'Artagnan's goal was greater, to earn a medal. A loss to Samuel Ingram of Great Britain was tough, but not final. D'Artagnan still had the chance to earn bronze if he could win his next two matches.
I did, Alicia. You did it. You did everything. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> you were amazing. Absolutely. Just being on the metal stand and having them put the metal around your neck, it's just, just incredible. This is Gartanian, the dude that I met in high school and wrestled with and created this bond and became brothers with. He just bronzed. We formed a special family through this process. I can't really imagine life without them. She is the largest support that I've ever had. She took an inner city kid and made him into a Paralympic champion. She's like another mother. Me and D'Artagnan were brothers. We're brothers. And she just created the family. Like she was the missing piece to the family.